So now what you do, after you move it like that and you can see that it's linked, you just right click on, so you just right click on the fader and then you select transmit value. So now when you move it here, <laughs> see that it's moving on the board. My guys, my girls, it's your man's Veracity T T back again with another tutorial in 2023. Look, Veracity Studio T One finally did it. Now I'm not sure if this feature exists in Studio One Five, but it's definitely clutch in Studio One Six. You can now move both ways. So if you move the tracks here on the board, the tracks inside the DAW will correspond and if you move the tracks in the DAW with the mouse the tracks on the board will correspond so bi-directional back and forth control finally so that is working in studio one so far on the Mac mini m1 Mac OS Ventura this is the only DAW that this is working in to my knowledge now I know what y'all thinking y'all probably looking at my theme like why is his because everybody want to use the dark theme but the problem is with FL studio we will start off using a dark theme so I like DAWs that's a little bit brighter not super bright but you know just to get away from the dark theme a bit The first thing that we want to do is we're just going to right click over here in this gray and we're going to create some tracks. All right. So let's just do 10 tracks for now. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to bring up the mixer here, clicking on that tab down there. All right. So now on the X32, I'm going to pull this up. X32 edit app here. All right. So you click this X32 edit app down there. Go here to set up and click on this middle tab that says MIDI control. So you can see my tab settings. You see I'm on car MIDI there and I'm on MIDI receive and transmit. This is important because this MIDI receive is basically what the computer is going to be. Uh, you'll see what I mean. So you need all of these checked for this to work correctly. And on my board, you can see that this is not turned on. So you want to leave that turned off. All right. So that's the first setup that you need. Okay. Also too, in setup, you want to make sure you're on 32 in 32 out. Okay. Within the car section there. So that's important as well. So now just for the sake of it, you see how up here I have this box that says control. You may not see this. So in this gray area here, I'm just going to right click and click on customize, right? So while you're here in customize, you can, can see that where it says on this tool, you see how we have these tabs on the toolbar tab, click this control link in. And that is where you get to your MIDI keyboards and all of your MIDI devices and whatnot. So that's this box here. So we're going to just click the drop down menu here, right? Click new device here and we're going to set up a brand new control surface. So you click there, the device name, we're going to use X32. Manufacturer is Behringer. And by the way, I am not supported by Behringer in any way. I'm not affiliated with Behringer and I am not partnered with Behringer. Just putting that out there. So after you do that, then you're going to select from X USB and to click OK. Wait, wait, wait. Can I change that? No, nope, I can't change that. OK, so yeah, just click OK here. So now it disappear. So you click back up here in this control box on that arrow and you click on it and you bring it up. Okay. You select MIDI learn and you move all the tracks that you want to control the dog. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna just make this a little bigger so you can see all the ones that I picked. All right. So remember, I already made a tutorial like this, but I'm about to show you the full way. So now we just go here make those faders all right once you make them faders so for here let's click him right so now we're going to right click on him and we're going to click assign to that control now you can see 
that it's moving, right? So now what you do, after you move it like that and you can see that it's linked, you just right click on, so you just right click on the fader and then you select transmit value. So now when you move it here, <laughs> you see that it's moving on the board. Now this is a little bit janky just because of the increments that the computer is using to move it. So sometimes it's hard for the board to do exact tiny increments the way that you can do it on a computer, but it's pretty much still accurate. So this is how you do it. You select transmit value. Now I'm not sure if this feature is available in Studio One 5 because I never noticed it before, but in Studio One 6, I noticed it and it's like, for me, it's a gold mine. So I'm just gonna do the next one like this and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna put a sign to value. So then I'm gonna right click there and put transmit value. So now if I move it on there, bam, it's gonna lock and it's also moving here. So that is how you do all of the tracks. If you wanna watch my video to where I go a little bit more in depth and show you everything, um, I'll leave a, card up top there so you can watch that but this is how you get it to where it's bi-directional meaning if you move it with your mouse here it's also going to move on the board and my last tutorial i was not able to figure that out but like i said guys i don't remember seeing this transmit value but if it was there my bad that's how you do it you just turn on transmit value it's working in studio one six so leave in the comments if it's also an option like that in Studio One Five. I don't remember seeing it, but leave it in the comments to let me know if I'm wrong. All right, peace. Catch you later.